Hi, welcome to the show. We're here at the Courtney Gallery at Jersey City State College with Dr. Hal Lemmerin, whose show, Major Bear and Friends, is currently running. Hey, Hal, good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Hal, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we actually get into your work, because you do have such a diverse uh, function here at the college. Uh, I uh, direct the galleries at the college. I teach um, courses in our fine arts um, area. Uh, sometimes I teach courses in theater, such as acting. Um, usually I design one show a year. Most times it's the spring musical. Um, my history has been one of, of studying art since I was six years old in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, at the museum there. And that was, um, that corresponded to also acting training I had at the same age. So I started young and I'm still doing what, what I was doing as a kid. Um, I uh, really get a, uh, the, the major work that I've shown throughout the country has been in printmaking. And um, we were just talking a little while ago. It's, it's interesting how the, the same blackness of the ink is what I've returned to here in um, drawing over the, um, the watercolors that you see here. These are watercolors um, done on location with the objects um, of the animal, animals you see in the showcase here. And um, then there are um, China markers used on top of them. Where did this idea come from? It came from, I guess, the love of the animals. Um, it just was something that happened. I uh, spent uh, vacation time in August down in, um, in Stockton, New Jersey. And uh, I just happened to bring animals to keep me company, if you will. And then I kind of fell in love with the designer furniture I found there. And I began putting the animals on different pieces of furniture, different parts of furniture upside down, um, hanging over. Uh, this is an example, if we can, uh, of an, a cow just kind of resting over the arm of that wonderful Chesterfield couch. And I, uh, this particular house also had uh, very interesting lighting effects. And so I began to look at the shadow and lighting, I say, and I said to myself, I really want to draw those. So actually what you're trying to do is put life into some uh, stuffed animals, basically, and interpret uh, how they would uh, perceive life, I guess. And all, right, and, and also to give them a, a, a character, to give them a feeling of, um, of friendliness. And once you do one, you get kind of hooked. Uh, and I, uh, the first one was Major Bear in a chair, and then I brought some other animals down to join him and then uh, we have a whole family of animals. You have here. a pretty extensive, uh, extensive collection of animals. Animal right collection. Okay. What about this piece right here, that, which seems to be uh, a, a kind of an interesting piece, especially since we're on television right now. Right. We have a cow watching television. Is there ever right. any significance to this? Piece? This this piece was one of my last ones that I did, and this was after I came back home from my vacation in Stockton. This is my own apartment, and what I've done is I've set up cow and raccoon in an old uh, camel chair that I kind of inherited from my father in front of my old RCA television set. But I tried to do a stage set here uh, so that they're both looking. You'll notice that, that his leg is almost blocking the view, which to me is a little humorous. Also, as opposed to a picture, I was thinking of putting cows in there or something or animals. I said, no. I said, now, now, I'm, now I'm becoming playwright. I'm setting up a situation here, and I decided, well, what they really should be looking at is fuzz, is nothing. Because what's happened before this is that someone has just left them there and left the television on. Mm -hmm. And as animals, they're not unable to turn it off. Uh -huh. So it's one of these things that happens at night, you know, late night. And so I, I, I call it cow and raccoon watch late TV, which means that everyone's in bed and they're still watching it because no one has removed them. 
Uh, I find it very interesting that in, in, in this show and in all of your work, I'm familiar with a, a, a lot of your work in a lot of different areas, you seem to integrate several parts of the art world to make whatever it is that you're doing work or happen. For example, in this particular uh, exhibit, there was a lot of theatrical and a lot of setup going on during the opening night. You want to talk a little bit about that sure, and, and how sure. it plays a part in your work? This show I thought should be fun for children. I thought the environment should be something that they would like to come into. And, and uh, being a grandfather and watching my own grandchildren and, and remembering what my children were going through, um, I thought it would be really fun to have a show that was for them. So what I did on this wall, in this example, I set it at a low level um, so they could see them, so they, they wouldn't have to stretch. Hi, who are you? Hi, my name is Claudia. And I'm here. Uh, my name is Jacini. How are you? What do you think of the work? Thank you. I think it's exceptional. It's a, they're excellent. We were actually commenting on the bears and how we would, we would definitely put them in a children's room. What do you find special about the bears? They're very comforting. I think they're very comforting. They're very soft. Yeah, they're excellent. Why do you think? Because of the way they're uh, set up? Slouching, yeah, they're friendly. They're definitely friendly. I can see what uh, the theme is. Something you might like to take home with you. Definitely. The bears. <laughs> the bears. I used to be a drum major. In, I didn't know that. Yeah, in high school and then in, for a year in college until I had to get back to my studies. Uh -huh. um, so this was given to me as a present, as a drum major. And therefore, it has real personal significance to me. The first year, and you'll see in other parts of the gallery, I, um, I drew the, the bear in a, in a chair, in a cane chair. And then the second year, I decided, you know, let's have some fun with him. So this is, this is my crazy sense of humor. I set him up on his, his, uh, on his hat. And uh, being a drummer, I remember these hats. You know, they're, they're 10, 12 pounds. And wow. you have to you just go down the field with this enormous um, bear hat, hat head on you, as it's called. So I let him teeter on this, like he's doing exercises. And of course, this is a nice leather chair that, that they had in Stockton. And I, I kind of like the, the flow of things. And the um, funny thing is his, his one eye is just kind of sneaking out there. Now, you've put him in several different positions in several different types of chairs. Is there any that are your favorite? Well, first of all, I like chairs. In the early days, I used to be a window designer for part time. And I used to do interior design work. So chairs have always been very favorite to me. I have a lot of chairs. Not a lot of the same chairs, but a lot of different chairs. Uh, the chair next to you is a uh, Eames chair. Uh, this is a designer chair. I fell in love with the Chesterfield sofas they had in Stockton. And uh, you'll see in the other parts of the uh, gallery here that I have positioned my animals on chairs. What about some of your other animals that you have, and also other objects? You have ice cream cones and... Uh pencils and a variety of different yeah, animals. And the, um, how do you go about choosing them? Well, the animals, of course, came first. And then uh, I felt the need to go and get these objects for them to relate to. So the chairs were there. The animals were then put on the chairs. And uh, I felt the need to use flowers with them, chess sets, television, um, had fun with a piano over here. Um, the first animal was the bear. Then I, I picked up a, um, a handmade uh, turtle. Uh, then um, a camel came along, which is an interesting story in itself, because it was given to me by my son, who happened to see my production of my one and only, where I had built a plywood camel. And so that was kind of his gift, and it was really, it's a wonderful kind of thing. And then I ordered a, a, a cow from L.L. L. Bean, the, and I called that my mail order bride. And I was, you know how L.L. L. Bean has uh, tags on everything they make? Right. Right. Well, I was amazed when, when on the stomach of this cow, there's an L.L. L. Bean label. It just, <laughs> it just flipped me out. 
than the dog and the raccoon and the, and the duck. I've always liked ducks. I've always liked their movement in the water, the way they go down and they come up, and I just love the colors. So these are kind of, you know, my friends. And, and of course, the, the large, larger than life, um, soft vegetables, which follows my whole set in the other art world I do, uh, work in of woodcuts, which are all vegetables. Um, turnips, uh, radishes, onions, uh, broccoli, uh, carrots, and so forth. So this actually, you could say, is a progression of, of earlier work, just definitely, in a new definitely, format. Definitely, different, different media and um, kind of all turned around. And there's a lot of set design feeling here, I think, where you're, where you're setting up forms and uh, like on a chess set, for instance, I was very careful of setting up that play so that it would result in checkmate. <laughs> you know, which you can't think of. The, the, the queen comes in and the castle comes in and once that's on the line, you, if you don't think about chess, you look out, boy. That's it. That's the end, of the, the end of the game for you. Speaking, so that was, that was kind of humorous, I thought. Speaking about other things that I, strike me as humorous and also in the area of set design, you have a clothesline and a setup over here. I'd like you to go over and talk a little bit about... Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd like, that's kind of fun for okay, me too. Okay, let's take a look at that.